The chair recognizes Mr. Correa of uh, California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, Ms. Nobles, I also want to express my condolences as a fellow parent. I also have a daughter, about the same age as your daughter. About two years ago, I got a phone call at home. I should say at work from home. My daughter was all alone at home. Called me screaming, crying, saying, Daddy, there's two men in the house. Two men were burglarizing the house. What do I do, Daddy? And I said, stay by the dogs. Let me call 911. And I, those moments of terror, I hate to think <clears throat> what would have happened if those German shepherds weren't there or if our local Santa Ana PD had not gotten there in minutes. Ma'am, I can guarantee you that no one condones criminals in our streets with or without documents. This is about our families and the safety of our families. With or without documents, I do not condone any money in our streets that would harm our families. Ms. Noble, my prayers are with your family. And Mr. Chair, without objection, I'd like to submit for the record this Wall Street Journal article entitled, What Everyone Except the USA Has Learned About Immigration As Washington Sits Divided, Our Global Rivals Lower Their Barriers to Ease Labor Shortages. Mr. Chairman? That's right. Uh, without objection. Mr. Hatfield, if I may, um, COVID. The aftermath of COVID. It seems that the USA is again the world's economic locomotive. The world seems to be devastated economically. Even the great China, even the great economy is sputtering right now. I got a phone call the other day from the president of Guatemala asking for help with the refugee challenge Guatemala is facing. You mentioned Colombia, 2.4 Venezuelan refugees. Mexico is having a challenge. This is a worldwide phenomena. You've already addressed it, but I want you to again repeat, is this a US challenge at this moment? We can look at this last two or three years and say this is, this is wrong, but you've got to open it up beyond just the US. It's a worldwide phenomena, am I correct or not? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean, the United States cannot solve this problem alone, but we're not going through it alone either. Um, the, and the global, refugee, the global refugee crisis is over 120 million people right now. I, I, I'm always tempted to say this is a refugee challenge like we haven't seen since World War II, when 60 million Europeans were on the move. Am I correct in that assessment? Yeah, I mean, the actual number is, is double that in terms of forcibly displaced persons. Uh, so you're, you're not incorrect at all. As a proportion of the world population, of course it's smaller, but in, ab in absolute numbers, it's double. Chief Scott, if I may ask you a question, sir. I wanna say, first of all, you do, are doing an impossible job. Thank you for what you're doing. You know, the private sector in our society continues to be a magnet for workers. 60% of the individuals that come across blend into society. They have families they arrive with. They blend into society. 50% of our farm workers are undocumented. I would say that as long as we don't have immigration reform that is sensible, that works for a private sector, the need for workers in this country is also a magnet. Would you say that or not? I started out in the Immigration and Naturalization Service where I was taught border security supports our legal immigration system so that we can meet needs like that. They do go hand in hand, but I do point out that if you can't control the flow in any way, then you really can't, any, any kind of numbers or any kind of decisions you put at the other end are irrelevant. Um, I, I do believe this country was based on uh, immigration. I think everybody in the Border Patrol supports immigration. That's why they got in, but we support it legally. And I agree with you. The problem is there is no way to get in to work in this country right now. Our economy would suffer. Again, 50% of our farm workers being undocumented. I don't think anybody supports a policy to deport those workers because that would affect our food security. But I look forward to working with all of you 
and making sure we do some common sense reforms that are good for the American economy and the American people. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I yield. General yields back.